Hello there everybody and welcome to Swift 16's redstone tutorial on how to build an advanced 8-bit computer inside Minecraft. My previous series on Minecraft computers was fairly successful and is gathering more and more views by the day. So I thought that since people have been demanding this, well, a couple I guess, <laughs> um, that I would create a, um, a series on how to build a more advanced computer. This um, in this video, I'll just go through a quick explanation of the parts and the components which we will be building to make this computer. Um, it's going to be like a pretty much a progression from the uh, four-bit computer, um, as you just probably heard. Um, this is going to be eight-bit, not four-bit. So that's um, but that doesn't make it any more advanced. But what is adv more advanced is well, pretty much everything inside it. The um, the old computer is out of date, uses very out of date technology, I guess you could call it, and um, yeah, just needed generally improving. Um, so yeah, let's begin with the explanation. Um, as hopefully you've seen my other tutorial, and if you haven't, you have a little bit of background knowledge about computers, that would help. Um, that you will know that the main um, the main, I don't know what to call it, brain I guess, or processing unit is the CPU inside a computer. It's what performs all of the mathematics, arithmetic, logic. Um, it basically controls the whole computer. That's what the CPU does. And inside Minecraft that's exactly the same. Um, the part of the CPU which controls all of that logic is called the ALU. And the ALU stands for Arithmetic Logic Unit. Um, so yeah, this will have many functions, and it is where um, all of the processing will occur. So, um, and that's the first like quarter of the CPU. Once the ALU has finished computing whatever it's computing, uh, never mind how the data got into it yet. Just uh, let's just say that it was computing some data. Uh, the output of that data will then pass into the output register. The output register is basically a sort of D flip flop. Hopefully, you know what one of those is. Basic memory cell, really. Well, it's one of those which automatically updates every clock cycle. So it's a clocked register, just like a real life register would be. And it holds, so that means it will always hold the most recent ALU output. Um, and that acts as an intermediate stage between the ALU and the general purpose registers, which are the GPRs. Since accessing RAM, which is external to the CPU, is quite costly and slow, you need to have places to store data. So that's what the general purpose registers are for. The registers can just hold data locally um, for fast access by the ALU. So the ALU output goes into the output register which automatically updates and sends the, uh, the output into the input of the general purpose registers. The general pur We will have seven general purpose registers um, because that means it can they can be addressed by a 3-bit binary number because a 3-bit binary number can count up to seven in decimal. Uh, basically what the general purpose register will be made of is dual read memory cells which means that they accept input from one they accept one input and when you save that input to the memory cell it can then be read from two outputs which means that um, two different addresses can be read at the same time one address could be read on read line one and another address could be read on read line two so that means once the data has been stored or loaded from the general purpose register, um, the two outputs, read 1 and read 2, will then go into a comparator. The comparator um, compares two numbers, hence the name, and it can tell you if the two inputs are equal, if the first read is greater than the second read, or the second read is greater than the first read. So there are our three main comparisons, 
and we will use those for conditional branching from the comparator which should only take about one tick to do by the way from the comparator the output then gets sent back into the ALU and the next um, next instruction will be loaded from ROM and it will process whatever information that is um, so yeah this these four um, components make up the central processing unit the CPU so this is the main CPU loop here now to move on to the RAM let's just make it day so we've got our data being processed in this loop and that loop will happen once every clock cycle basically your clock time is how slow it takes all of this to compute well yeah pretty much but since we've only got seven uh, registers or locations to store data we do need more space because obviously a computer can't just hold seven bits of data at the same time it needs to hold many many different bits of data so that's what we use RAM for RAM is like on on the go well not on the go but like slightly more permanent um, memory space and much larger memory space than our general purpose registers but since they are bigger and um, yeah since they're bigger they take more time to access <coughs> sorry about that so yeah um, and like any other memory cell well group of memory cells each like memory cell inside um, the group needs to have an address so inside the external RAM there may be 31 different addresses and that addressing is very important um, we can uh, let's uh this is quite hard to explain I right, just hold that thought a second just uh, make sure you remember that the, um, each uh, like location needs an address um, sorry about that, so back to the ALU uh, once an ALU has finished computing an answer um, it not only goes into the output register but it also goes into a dedicated uh, register which is used for addressing the RAM so say if we had an output of 10 10 um, would then be sent into the address register as well as the output register and but this doesn't update every clock cycle this will only update when the user tells it to in the instruction so so yes yeah, so 10 is coming through here and then we say okay update the A register which is the address register just for short and um, so yeah now 10 will be stored in the address register so and whatever address is stored in here um, directly relates to whatever address RAM address of RAM we will be using so if we wanted to read from address 10 of external mem of external RAM we would first have to load 10 into the A register and then 10 will be selected from the RAM and whatever data will be sent back into the ALU and if we wanted to write to address 10 address uh, 10 would have to be stored in the address register and then that will be used and then that will say okay access uh, address 10 of external RAM and then that data will then be saved into that location so that's basically what the address register is for and what the RAM is for um, but since we can read or write to or from RAM we need a two-way bus or two buses um, and I've put two-way bus here, but I'll probably just have two separate buses. Um, a bus is just a way of transporting data from one component to the other, pretty much. So yeah, so when uh, let's say we're reading from RAM, uh, reading, um, yeah, reading from RAM again, and we want to read from address, oh no, 23 this time. So 23 will be now stored in the address register, and in our instruction we'll say read from uh, address 23. So that data will then come out of the RAM, travel along the bus, and then back into the ALU, where it can then be stored in a general purpose register for quick use another time. Okay, so that's how reading works. And then, but writing, obviously, instead of 
getting data from the RAM, we're sending data from the ALU to the RAM, um, the data is going to travel along this, like from this in this direction. So, say we wanted to write to address 16, we will load 16 in the address register, and then our data will travel this way along the bus and be written to address 16 of RAM. So that's how the two-way bus, the address register, and the external RAM work um, to provide us with more memory space. So that's our CPU and that's our RAM. They're two main uh, components. And now we, like in a normal computer, you'd have a graphics card for output. Um, obviously, in a micro computer, that's not quite um, realistic. So instead, we can just have a BCD output um, or a GPU. A GPU is a, um, a graphics processing unit, and that then um, could like draw lines or other similar, um, other like basic shapes, like um, squares or possibly even circles if you're like proper English's level of Minecraft. Um, but yes, yeah, so that's what a GPU would be used for it can do very basic image rendering inside Minecraft and the other type is just a standard binary or decimal output um, this form of output which I will be using is called a BCD output BCD stands for binary coded decimal so it's kinda like a mix in between binary and decimal but um, it's much it's like a basically a much more efficient way of turning a binary input into a decimal output without having to have a massive binary to decimal decoder because um, since this is 8-bit and 8-bit is going up to something like 255 in decimal so having 255 separate decoders would just be enormous and impractical so we use BCD and the nice thing about BCD is that the output goes directly into a 7 segment display the 7 segment display I'm sure you've all heard of is like a number display and that provides a really nice output. So we will have a three digit seven segment display which um, which will go up to number 255 and if I am feeling um, very energetic <laughs> I guess uh, and have a lot of willpower I might add a GPU onto the end of here. Um, the BCD output feeds will be fed directly from the output register whatever is stored in the output register will automatically be sent to the BCD output. So that output will be constantly updated because this is constantly updated. So it will always be up to date. So that's our output and our ALU and our RAM. Now for the input. Um, just like the output, the input will also be BCDs, binary coded decimal, because um, I was told that my previous video, in my previous series, sorry, we just had a standard binary input. But for people who are maybe as comfortable um, figuring out numbers in binary, um, decimal would be a better option. But having um, a whole decimal display and having to convert all of that back into binary would mean a really big decoder, just like the output. So we'll be using BCD um, to go from decimal back to binary and hopefully that decoder won't be too big so our input once we select it will go into the ALU for computing and various other things which I've already explained so that's one method of input but since um, the computer is clocked and that clock will only be a few seconds so um, we don't want to have to be quickly inputting something like every three seconds um, that would be very hard if we've got a lot of levers to press and we wouldn't get there in time and faulty data might be inputted in. So the second place we can input data is on our program memory or our ROM. Um, we can, it's just called the literal value which is just any number so you can say with torches on the ROM you can say load this literal value into the ALU. There'll be like a mux here a multiplexer to choose whether we want the BCD input or we want the little value input from the ROM. So that's our two main methods of inputting to their CPU. 
And now finally just to explain the ROM. The ROM is where our program is stored. Um, I'm sure you all understand this if you've seen my other video. Um, this will be exactly the same pretty much as my previous uh, as my previous series. Um, yeah, maybe obviously with a bit more functionality because this computer will be far more advanced than that puny thing. But yeah, that's uh, the program memory is just um, memory which cannot be written to, like the registers or the RAM. It can only be read from, which is why it's called read-only memory. And every clock cycle, um, the location increases and whatever instructions are located in that location um, will be used. Uh, that might sound a little bit confusing but really it's not and I might do a link um, to the where I build the ROM in my previous series if you want to get a bit of a better explanation of that. Um, so yeah this is pretty much the whole layout for the computer, there's not much more to say about it. Um, if you have any questions or queries you can ask them, but I wouldn't advise you to start bombarding me with questions via inbox because hopefully they'll all be answered when I actually build the thing. So yeah, I won't be doing any building in this video, but in the next one I will. Um, hopefully that has given you a nice appetizer into the series and I hope you stick around to see the computer being built. So yeah, thanks for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe.